This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Thanks for joining us here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. It's Wednesday, November 23rd. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, the victim of Monday's structure fire has been released, uh, or the name of the victim. The prompt resident wife and mother of two adult children, Wendy King, died in the blaze on Belleville Road. The Nevada State Fire Marshal and Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue are still investigating the cause of this RV fire that occurred around 1030 in the evening as her husband, Matthew, was attempting to find their dog that had run off the property, according to Fire Chief Scott Lewis. The King family are well known to local residents. Wendy was dedicated to her family, church, and was a musician who would perform at many charity and religious related events around town. Her daughter, Zoe, was an intern here at KPVM TV in our news department before heading off to college to chase her dream in the film industry. Our hearts and prayers go out to the King family during this tragic time. Nevada Highway Patrol is releasing new details of a crash in Elko County that killed a well-known Las Vegas business owner. Brad Francis reports. 53-year-old Kenny Lee was killed last Friday, November 19th, in a crash in northern Nevada. Lee was the CEO of Lee's Discount Liquor, Nevada's largest liquor retailer, with 23 stores in Las Vegas, Reno, Mesquite, and West Wendover. NHP investigators say Lee was driving a Dodge Grand Caravan southbound on US-93 alternate between West Wendover and Ely when, for reasons unknown, Lee's vehicle crossed the center line and entered the path of a Ford pickup towing a flatbed trailer which was traveling northbound on US 93A. Authorities say the driver of the Ford steered onto the northbound shoulder in an attempt to avoid a crash. Lee's vehicle struck the left side of the Ford, then continued to strike the left side of the trailer. NHP says Lee was unrestrained and was ejected. Two people inside the pickup sustained minor injuries. Lee died at the scene. Lee's death comes just three months after his father and founder of Lee's Discount Liquor died of cancer. And NHP is investigating a Las Vegas crash that killed a Kansas woman and injured nine others. Here's Brad. The crash happened just before 1.30 Sunday morning on Charleston Boulevard at I-15. NHP investigators say a white Ford Explorer was traveling westbound on Charleston Boulevard. At the same time, a black Chevy Suburban was traveling northbound on the I-15 off-ramp approaching Charleston Boulevard. Authorities say the Suburban, which had a green traffic signal, entered the intersection, but the Explorer failed to stop for a red signal and continued into the intersection where it struck the Suburban broadside. The impact caused the Suburban to overturn turn. NHP says two occupants inside the Explorer were transported to UMC Trauma in serious condition. Eight people inside the Suburban were also transported to UMC Trauma. One of those passengers, identified as 54-year-old Gina Artzer from Kansas City, Kansas, died a short time later. This marks the Nevada Highway Patrol Southern Command's 73rd deadly crash, resulting in 82 fatalities this year. Well, three co-defendants accused of kidnapping, torture, and murder of a 27-year-old named Roy Jaggers will be back in court on December 3rd. The case is set for trial next August. District Court Judge Kimberly Wonker explained at the hearing last week the process will require a lot of time, resources, and money. Heather Pate, Kevin Dent, and Brad Main remain behind bars as the case against them moves through the courts. All three co-defendants are accused of kidnapping, torturing, and killing 27-year-old Roy Jaggers of Las Vegas. Jaggers' body was discovered at Cathedral Canyon, a remote area south of Pahrump, on August 1st. All three defendants were identified and arrested within 36 hours and have been in the Nye County Detention Center ever since. Pate, Dent, and Main appeared before Judge Kimberly Wonker on November 5th. At that time, Pate and Main each entered a plea of not guilty for their role in Jagger's murder. However, Dent and his attorney, Jason Ernest, wanted more time. At a hearing last Friday, Dent entered his plea, saying he too is not guilty. Dent is charged with first-degree kidnapping with use of a deadly weapon, which carries a sentence of at least 16 years in prison, and open murder with use of a deadly weapon, which carries a sentence of at least 21 years in prison, but a charge for which the state could seek the death penalty. Judge Wonker says this high-profile case will require a lot of resources and be quite costly. There's a lot of work, folks, um, and I want to make it that there's going to be a lot of expense, and that discussion, need, the county needs to be ready to budget probably a half a million dollars 
I would say at a minimum. There's sequestration issues. There are a number of issues. It's not going to be a circus. It's going to be run um, smoothly and efficiently. But we need to, uh, after, after December 3rd, uh, when I know what's going on, if that's the case, then there's going to have to be meetings with the county so they understand their obligations by law to the court, because the court's got one obligation. They're going to have to deal with the DA budget, and they're going to have to deal with the defense budget. But I want them to be well aware of what their obligations are. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to need more staff right from the get-go, and I'm going to have to probably assign one or two employees to do nothing but work full-time on the Still unknown is whether the district attorney intends to seek the death penalty against any or all of the co-defendants in this case. Judge Wonker says she expects to know the DA's intentions by the next hearing scheduled for December 3rd. More news when we return after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Effective immediately, the Nevada Department of Public Safety will be utilizing the designation of Nevada State Police, which was authorized by the recent passage of Senate Bill 58. The Nevada Department of Public Safety has a vast scope of service to Nevada's residents and visitors. The DPS name has resulted in some misunderstanding of the mission, purpose, and authority of that department. By using the state police designation, they say the department can realign into more effective and efficient entity that clarifies the role of the Nevada State Police and assists in branding for marketing and recruitment efforts. While the DPS remains the umbrella name for the department, for simplification purposes, the Nevada State Police will be utilized in media releases, social media, on vehicles, and on collateral and recruitment material. Law enforcement divisions within the state police include the Highway Patrol, Parole and Probation, Capitol Police Investigations, and the State Fire Marshal. Linda Wright invites everyone to enjoy a free dinner on Thanksgiving Day with the community. It's going to happen on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 25th, from 11 to 2 at the Nye Communities Coalition. 1020 East Wilson Road behind Walmart. It's our way of giving back to the community. Just a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, turkey, dressing, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberries, vegetable and dessert, coffee, tea. Bring the whole family. Um, we don't want anybody just to be home alone. We want you to come and socialize with us. We have D and J, um, a dual group. Um, they're coming out to entertain and give back to the community also. Last year we did a curbside drive-by pickup um, so we could still give back to the community and this year we're back to our sit-down dinner. Woohoo! And it'll be a buffet dinner um, like it has been in the past. And the good thing is you don't have to cook. And if you aren't too busy on Thursday morning or if you just want to work off some of those upcoming calories later in the day on Thanksgiving, there is a family fun event happening at Spring Mountain Motorsports. So it's a fundraiser we've been doing for several years. We haven't done it the last two years just because of COVID, but we're back on. Mm -hmm. It'll be Thanksgiving morning. It's a fundraiser for the youth of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints mm -hmm. of the Game Bird Ward. And it's our big fundraiser of the year so that we can go and do activities and events. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great time. It's a 5K run and then followed up with a family fun walk, one mile walk. And so the 5K run is a com competition. The five... Uh, the top two racers, a female and male, get prizes. It's a turkey, a frozen turkey. And uh, the family fun run afterward is just for fun. The whole family can come out and uh, do it all together. It's not a competition, or if you want it to be, it can be. Um, but mostly, it's just a great time and a good way to start Thanksgiving morning. So the best way is to go on to active.com and look up Run Gobble Nap. Um, there's flyers throughout town. You can just scan the QR code or you can call me. My number is 775-910-3789 and I can walk you through the details. Or if you know any youth that are part of the Game Bird Ward of our church, uh, they can definitely direct you and help you uh, get signed up through them if you want to do cash or anything like that. This is for anyone and everyone. If you're 80 years old or if you're two years old, come on out and we want to have you and have a great time. Each racer in the 5K race, it's $30 per racer. 
Um, for the family fun run, it's either $15 per person or $50 for a whole family, immediate family, not cousins and aunts and uncles, just the immediate family. Mm -hmm. So you can get a little deal that way. If you want to have a t-shirt, because we'll be handing t-shirts out to all the racers of the 5k race, you have to sign up before November 10th so we can get t-shirts made in time. So it's located at Spring Mountain Raceway. It's the address is 4767 South Highway 160. It's the big Spring Mountain Raceway that everyone knows and hears the cars all the time. It'll be held there. You can start check-in at 7 a.m. The 5K race starts at 8 a.m. And then the Family Fun Run will follow immediately, usually about an hour later, so about nine o'clock. We will be running on the racetrack. It's called the East Track and the North-South Track. We kind of combine them for the 5K and then go out and change the course for the one mile run. But it is a really fun uh, opportunity to actually go out and be on the racetrack where you hear all those cars at. Thanks so much, Cody. Well, with the COVID-19 vaccine now widely available, many families are hoping to celebrate Thanksgiving like they used to. But Dr. Joseph Cabaza with Cleveland Clinic says it's still important to take some precautions so everyone is safe. If you're planning a Thanksgiving get together, you know, you want to know who your who do your who your audience is, who are the people who are going to be under your roof that you're feeding. Um, and you know, again, knowing who's immunocompromised, who's more susceptible and higher risk should they succumb to infection. Dr. Cabaza says even though COVID cases are lower than they have been in the last few months, we shouldn't let our guard down. He says the best thing you can do is make sure everyone in your household is vaccinated. That's going to give you the best protection. Other recommendations include wearing masks if needed and of course, regularly washing your hands. As for children who aren't old enough to get vaccinated, he says that's who parents really need to watch out for. Not only are they at risk for contracting the the virus, but can easily spread it to other people who are not vaccinated. It's really hard to explain how sad it was in the ICU last year, seeing loved ones, you know, really pass away from holiday gatherings. And so you want to minimize the odds of that at all. But having a mostly vaccinated household um, is really the main way uh, to make those risks almost negligible. Dr. Cabaza says if you're planning to travel for Thanksgiving, you could also check the infection and vaccination rates for that specific community. That could help you decide whether or not to go. All right, your sports right after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. It's sports time. Here's Doug. Hello, sports fans. In the next week or so, both the Pahrump Valley High School boys and girls basketball teams will be tipping off their seasons. The Lady Trojan basketball team finished 30-4 in its last full season back in 2019. Unfortunately, the girls just missed the state title. Coach Bob Hopkins, who recently led his girls' golf team to state runners-up, has high hopes for this basketball season. Okay, for the season, uh, I, I look for us to win somewhere between 15 to 20 basketball games this year, and hopefully we will uh, win our league, uh, get to the regional, and uh, it should be a pretty competitive regional. I think Boulder City and uh, Moapa Valley will both be pretty tough, and uh, Virgin Valley should be uh, uh, pretty good too, because they had our big sophomore team uh, a couple years ago. So. On the boys' side, the Trojans have a new coach, David Wilson. Wilson has been around for a few months and seems to have a good feel for this upcoming season. So, yeah, we have a lot of seniors on the team this year, uh, so we're going to be very experienced, very deep. Uh, the guys have had great attitudes and have been really receptive to coaching up to this point, point. Um, and I've only been with them for a couple months. Uh, we're really looking forward to the season. We have high expectations for ourselves as a group and uh, just going to take it day by day and get better, better and better. In a week where we talk a lot about turkeys, the Las Vegas Raiders continue to struggle even though they could have very easily won two of the last three games. Sunday they were beaten for the third straight week, 32-13, to at the hands of the Cincinnati Bengals in front of another sellout crowd at Allegiant Stadium. The Silver and Black had no answer to Bengal running back Joe Mixon, who ran for 123 yards and two touchdowns. The Raiders combined for only 287 yards in the loss. Quarterback Derek Carr didn't engineer a touchdown until a 
three plays, 75 yard drive with 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter, pulling the Raiders to within three at 16 13. From there, the Bengals went on a 19 to nothing scoring spree to close this one out. The Raiders will be in Dallas Thursday for a game with the Cowboys. Kickoff is set for 1.30. The UNLV football team nearly pulled off an upset last Friday night at Allegiant, hosting 23rd-ranked San Diego State, who were 10-1. The Rebels came within a single point in the third quarter before losing by a slim 28-20 margin. UNLV is now 2-9 on the season. They finish up this Friday at the Air Force Academy. Kickoff is set for 12:30. The Las Vegas Golden Knights, after winning five of six games on their recent homestand, including a 3-2 win Saturday night against the Columbus Blue Jackets, were beaten last night in St. Louis by the Blues 5-2. The Knights take on the Predators in Nashville tomorrow night. If you have any inspirational stories, athletes, or ideas, send me an email at dougf at kpvm25.tv. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Now back to the news desk. All right, we're going to go to Luis Posada with what is happening in your student news. Hi guys, I'm Luis Posado, a student here at Prem Valley High School, and I'm here to give you guys some exciting information. For beginners, happening in the cafeteria during lunch, we'll be selling apple and pum pumpkin pies for $15. Tomorrow is the turkey trot happening at Floyd Elementary. This is where K-5 through students will be walking and running and participating in Thanksgiving festivities in the Artesia community. So if you're driving through Artesia, please be safe and watch out for children. And also, if you're willing to help out with this event, please contact Floyd Elementary. Thanksgiving morning, Spring Mountain Motorsports is conducting the Gobble, Run, and Nap events. 7 a.m. is the sign-up sheet where there is a fee, 8 a.m. is the 5K race, and 9 a.m. is the family fun. Happening from 11 to 2 on Thanksgiving is the Thanksgiving Feast conducted by the Nye Ca Communities Coalition on 1020 East Wilson Road. It is open to the entire public and is free. Tomorrow is a half day for all Nye County students, and Thursday and Friday are completely off. So enjoy your Thanksgiving week and have a great week. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, beautiful sunset that we've been having lately. We're going to find out more about what's coming up in your weather after this break. News 25 Weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. And today in Las Vegas, they had a high of 70. Tonight, looking at 47 degrees. Death Valley, 75 with a low tonight of 54. And uh, Amargosa, 71, 39 tonight. Beatty, 66, 37. We've got uh, 52 degrees there in Goldfield and Tonopah with Tonopah a low of 18. And Goldfield looking at 22. Carson City is looking at a low tonight of 22 with its high, 57. And, of course, 57 up there in Fallon with a low of 19 degrees. Grace Burnley, 5323. And here in Prump, clear skies with a high of 62. Low tonight, 39. Winds out of the east at 6 miles per hour. Humidity at 13%. Sunset, 431 p.m. And tonight, or tomorrow, we're looking at a high of 61. Sunny skies with a low of 34. Winds out of the north at 14 miles per hour. So hold on to your hats just a bit there. Humidity at 18%. And sunrise, 630 in the morning. Your seven-day forecast once again shows those winds um, at 14 miles per hour coming out of the north with a high of 61, low of 34. Thursday, we're looking at uh, the winds, just a mild winds pretty much through the rest of the week. And Thursdays uh, on Turkey Day, we have a high of 62, a low of 39, Friday 67, 41. Staying right around those temperatures on Saturday, 69, 45, and staying in the low 70s throughout till next Tuesday with the high 40s happening right here in Pahrump. Second Amendment Guns is having a soft ground opening. That will be this Friday on Black Friday. They are super excited to do this finally. They've been waiting to open 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. That is the indoor shooting range. And if you would like to go there, it is, of course, at located 16, well, 1360 East Basin Avenue. 
There also is the Gavas Defense, which is also opening right there on the corner of Basin and Highway 160. They're also going to be having a soft opening on uh, that day as well, exactly at the same hours. And that is a store where you could purchase your weapons and ammo and everything right there at the corner. And of course, there is a Senior Center Thanksgiving happening up there in Beatty. And if you would like to go to that, it is from 1130 until 1230. Um, actually, um, that is actually happening tomorrow, right, um, the 24th. So that is not on Thanksgiving Day. You also need to call if you'd like to reserve a table, 775-382-3702. And, um, well, that's going to pretty much wrap up this edition of News 25. We'll be back here tomorrow. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Good night.